Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to our channel and in this video, I'm going to talk about Microsoft XDR capabilities. So the core agenda of this video will be knowing what is XDR and what is Microsoft's security strategy. Whereas we are also going to talk about the rebranding of the security products or the security services, which has been announced lately. What is the purpose behind integrating all the security products with Azure Sentinel? Why there is something like unified SIM is being portrayed when we talk about Microsoft security solutions. And lastly, we are going to talk about how everything falls under the scope of Microsoft threat protection or how multiple security solutions can help you secure each and every digital state. Now we'll start with rebranding because this is something which is very important and which will act as a foundation in terms of knowing what is XDR. Okay, so what you see here right now is four different products which typically exist to protect your different digital estates which belongs to M365. Likewise, the first one is email which is secured and protected by Office 365 ATP. Then we have endpoints which is secured and protected by Microsoft. Microsoft Defender ATP. Then we have identity part, which is being protected by Azure ATP, which is a typical solution that can monitor the logs which are generated by domain controllers in terms of defining user anomalies. But lately, uh, the support for ADFS is also being introduced. And the last one, we have Microsoft Cloud App Security, a kind of a solution that can help you protect all the applications likewise there should be no data exfiltration uh, risky apps should get blocked and some of the dlp capabilities as well okay but when we talk about rebranding there is no name change for mcas but office 365 atp is now termed as microsoft defender for office 365 microsoft defender atp is now termed as uh, Microsoft Defender for Endpoints and Azure ATP is now termed as Microsoft Defender for Identity. Now, as I've said before, that all these security solutions are basically license based. And if I talk about the way they are available, they, are, they typically come with either EMS E5 or M365 E5 security or let's say M365 E5 compliance. These are the different license schools which are available. The moment you procure any of these licenses, you can go ahead and deploy these kind of security solutions to protect a specific digital state. But there is one more digital state and that is documents, that is data, which is also a part of Microsoft compliance solutions which also comes with the licenses which are moreover related to modern workplace implementation right so moreover all these components they are falling under the scope of m365 so the new branding that has been done uh, wherein everything starts with microsoft defender is because this entire suit is now termed as m365 defender so for email we have Microsoft Defender for Office 365. Similarly, for endpoints, we have Microsoft Defender for endpoints, right? Now, that's the reason why there is a brand name change that has happened in terms of signifying a specific security product, which is falling under the scope of modern workplace. But what we have to understand from an enterprise perspective that it's not only the modern workplace or Office 365 or email or endpoints that we have to protect. It's a very big story. You know, there is a very big picture that has to be protected as well. And that is our infrastructure or network, right? So since we are talking about Microsoft, let's take a hypothetical example of using Azure. That means we are using certain resources that exist in Azure. Though from a product capability perspective, Azure Security Center can help you protect the resources that exist in different clouds, likewise AWS and GCP. But think about a scenario wherein you have a hybrid environment. Some of the resources exist on-prem that you have onboarded to Azure Security Center. And then you have your own resources that exist in Azure and everything has to be protected. Now, Azure Security Center is not new. It's been there for so long. But when we talk about service specific security capabilities, if you will go ahead and search for the new product capabilities which are available, you'll find multiple options. Likewise, Azure Defender for servers, 
Azure Defender for IoT, Azure Defender for Kubernetes clusters, and then Azure Defender for SQL. Now, these are all different services which are a part of Azure Security Center now. And depending upon the resource you want to protect, you can use the respective service. So anything that exists in modern workplace suit will be protected by M365 Defender and anything that exists in Azure will be protected by Azure Defender. So these are the two different kind of rebranding that has been done in terms of making sure there is a common name that exists in terms of understanding how the products are working, right? Now let's talk about how come this branding is going to help with XDR or why this branding has been done and what is the purpose behind that, okay? So let me just name some of the security product. The list that you see here is not the complete list of all the security products. I have just added some of them to make sure that we understand the concept behind XDR capabilities, okay? So if I talk about Microsoft Defender for Office 365, we know the purpose of this security solution is to detect and respond or response towards the email threats. When we talk about Microsoft Defender for endpoints, it's specifically for endpoints. When we talk about Microsoft Defender for identity, it is there to secure identities. And the same process goes on for all these different security products, right? But think about this, in a nutshell, all these products, they are detecting and helping you to respond or automatically responding to a threat which has been detected already. That means we are sorted with the DR part. That means detection and response capabilities, right? But when we talk about Microsoft, when we talk about unified intelligence, when we talk about the capabilities wherein the threat intelligence is shared across all the services, Think about a use case wherein your EDR, that means endpoint detection and response capability of Microsoft Defender for Endpoint has highlighted a threat indicator. Since the intelligence is shared with all the services, all the other components will come to know about this particular threat or this threat indicator, right? Now think about a scenario wherein you have different security solutions, right? The biggest challenge for an enterprise is to make sure that all the security products are connected and the intelligence remains same. The security intensity across the different digital states remains same. Now, this is something which comes out of the box when we talk about Microsoft security products because every security product is powered by Microsoft Security Intelligence API. Right now, in this case, what's happening, one of the solution was able to identify a threat and the same intelligence was shared with different products and then they all are at the same level. So now if we take a step back from a de detection and response capability perspective, think about this. If there is any solution that can highlight a threat and that intelligence can be shared, that means you are protecting your digital states or your enterprise end to end, right? Now, if you are protecting everything with different security solutions, which are sharing intelligence, that's what exactly the extended and extended detection and response capability. This X can be anything. This X can be any security solution, right? But what you have to make sure that you have the capability to detect and respond to threats across multiple solutions, across different digital states. And if you will just go ahead and type what is XDR, this is a common definition that you'll find in Google or in any of the other websites as well, okay? So now think about this that if we combine the entire M365 Defender suit with Azure Defender, what will happen? Each and every state is protected as well as the intelligence is getting shared, right? And that's what Microsoft extended detection and response capabilities is all about, right? Every intelligence is getting shared. Likewise, if there is any particular solution which is uh, able to identify a particular threat, that kind of intelligence is getting shared. And when we talk about Microsoft, 
it's not only about the threat intelligence which Microsoft is generating. If you have different security solutions, you can actually use Graph API to send the other intelligence as a threat indicator and then that will also be used or that will also be used as a method in terms of knowing if there is any impact or not. Okay. Now this was one aspect of knowing what is XDR. The methods wherein we can detect and respond to threats end to end across every digital state across every resource by the combination of multiple security solutions is typically termed as XDR. But think about one more component which is very important from a security perspective and that is SIM solution. Now let's break it down and make it super easy. SIM solution was basically a combination of security information management and security event management. Think about this, right? Now, what's happening as of now that because of the scalability, because of the adoption of different solutions, there is an immense amount of data which is getting generated and security operations centers or the SOC analyst, they are just overloaded with different kind of alerts altogether. Now, when we talk about Microsoft, when we talk about Microsoft solution for this kind of problem, the answer to that is Azure Sentinel. Now, what does this mean that Azure Sentinel is being designed to cater the data which is generated at cloud scale? Now, what does this typically mean that any security service which Microsoft has, you can inject the information or the telemetry that's been generated by that particular solution to Azure Sentinel. And since Azure Sentinel uses the correlations, uh, different kind of uh, ML learnings and different kind of AI models to show you a specific incident that can be a combination of different alerts altogether, it is very easy for a SOC analyst to actually go ahead and verify where exactly the threat is. What is the current impact and how many other entities can be impacted. Now, when we talk about Azure Sentinel, where one of the very common term that you might read when you go ahead and start working on Azure Sentinel and that is it's a unified SIM. Now, what does this typically mean that irrespective of the solution that you are using, be it Microsoft or be it other cloud solutions or be it other third party solutions, the underlying concept behind Azure Sentinel is again Azure Log Analytics Workspace. That means you can actually use API calls, you can actually use REST APIs to send data to Azure Sentinel Log Analytics Workspace as well. Now, by default, there are many connectors and I think around 30 more connectors are being announced in this Ignite. And that this list will obviously will keep on growing, but just for your information, this is the entire Microsoft security strategy to make sure that everything from an M365 perspective is secured, everything from a hybrid cloud, poly cloud or on-prem environment is secured. And then you have end-to-end -end security by the underlying concept of XDR capabilities. And then from a SOC operations perspective, one of the very common tagline which is available on any of the Microsoft article and that's modernize your SOC, right? You have Azure Sentinel, which has many advanced capabilities like user behavior and uh, user behavior and entity behavior analytics, right? These are the some of the capabilities which exist by default, in fact, it can actually let you know that what kind of threat is lying at which stage of an attack. Now, when I say attack, I'm referring to Meteor attack framework. It can even let you know that whether a threat attack is in the reconnaissance phase or in a defense evasion phase. These are the different methods or features which are available. Now, if you will look at this picture as one single concept, this is Microsoft threat protection, which makes sure that each and every entity is secured end to end with a proper framework for your SOC team or for your SOC analysts. So this was all about knowing how the XDR capabilities work with Microsoft. And this video is exceptionally important because I'm going to cover different aspects of security wherein I may use this deck as a reference point. So that's why I thought of covering it in a lot more detail.
So let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have discussed. We have discussed about the XDR capabilities, the rebranding which has been done, the integration of security products with Azure Sentinel. The purpose behind that is to use a cloud native SIM and source solution, which has been designed with the thought process of handling data at cloud scale altogether. And the last thing that we discussed is Microsoft Threat Protection. Now, if you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new, please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.